As J.J. Reddick pointed out today on Twitter, five different champions in the last six teams for those who are concerned about parity. But what does it all mean for those Thunder? Sources told Leachy Report's Howard Beck that Russ Westbrook is not planning on sticking around very long. His contract is up next year, and if OKC can't sign him long term, and posits that the team could trade him sooner rather than later. Would that make sense to you, Bill? Absolutely. Trade him now. Trade him tomorrow. Get rid of him. He, he's not going to resign there. You're going to let him walk after letting Durant walk. You say, well, maybe he'll have more value during the middle of the season. Well, no, because he's gonna, who's going to want him for two months as a two-month rental? They're going to get him now. Also, mm. I think his value has never been higher than now. He, he led a team to the cusp of the NBA Finals, and we've seen how he does without Durant. We've seen what he does when he's on the court by himself. You don't, you don't want to see him around the, what, they, what they have in Oklahoma City right now. You, you, it's better to think of him last year. His value will never be higher. His, his, uh, the market's never better for him. Trade him now to somebody who thinks that they can contend with him next year. Woody, how do you advise Sam Presti? Well, first of all, Bill, is this your first day on the show, too? You just talked about homegrown <laughs> players for the Clippers. Their best player was actually put on that team by the NBA front office. Don't talk oh, he to was me about not. That. They traded for him, Woody. Here, oh, no. You're, you're sitting here talking about Westbrook and you want to trade him now. Well, they have just made a deal for a group of players that are going to come in to help that team. He could lead the league in scoring. He's going to have a, a, a duel with Kevin Durant. He's going to try to prove him he made a mistake. He's got these new young players around him. Why not stay there? Let's find out how this team puts together. I went through a situation here in Denver when Carmelo left, and really, mm. how did that help both teams? Why not keep the player and see what happens? Izzy, do you want to see angry Russell Westbrook in Oklahoma City, or are you looking for him to get out of there? I'm still trying to figure out who it is that Bill wants him to be traded to. I wonder. <laughs> uh, no, I, I do think. <laughs> no, I, I do don't want think the okay. <laughs> I do think the OKC Thunder should at least hang on to him for a little bit because you know there's always going to be trade partners. There's always going to be suitors. And who knows, maybe oh, the Warriors or whoever the top of the league is just demoralizes everybody else so much that you get more suitors and more trade offers. And here's the twist. What if he goes through a month or two playing in Oklahoma City without Kevin Durant and kind of likes it? Like mm. likes being the guy who can shoot 30% and everybody's still, got, everybody's still supporting you and you're still talking Big about risk. MVP uh, candidacy. Ramona. Well, listen, the, the story that you, that you read from Howard Beck, it quotes uh, NBA front office guys, like who are feasting on this idea, who are <laughs> kicking <laughs> Sam Presti when he's down. Right? My goodness. I mean, of course Fair they're going to say that they should trade Russell Westbrook. Yeah, to them, because they want him. He's one of the best players in the league. There's no such thing as trading a superstar and getting equal, equal value for them anymore. But I think his value is probably the highest right now because any team that trades for him knows that he can leave them after next season. Mm. And so unless they have assurances that he, that he wants to resign, you're not going to give up very much for Russell, West, for Russell Westbrook right now. But if I'm Sam Presti, I go to, Rus to Russell Westbrook and say, listen, can we do for you what Houston did for James Harden? Can mm. we sign an extension, extension and give you some yeah. more money to get you to stay for at least another year? Plashke, who are you sending Russell Westbrook? For to? though, I, for the record, I huh. don't want him traded to the Lakers. I'm really high on D'Angelo Russell no. after watching him in summer league mm -hmm. and Brandon Ingram. Sure. No, go to, not to the Lakers, but trade, but trade him somewhere. But trade him somewhere. Clippers, just for good measure. <laughs> in other league development, it's time to backtrack a hack a shack. The NBA has ruled that all fouls off the ball in the last two minutes of any quarter will now result in one shot and the ball back. But you can still hack a shack. Scrummund a Drummond or Bismack Biombo for the first 10 minutes of each quarter. So, Woody, do you like this legislative compromise? <laughs> Not, not at all. Really? You think this is going to change anything in the NBA? Oh, I'm a coach. Oh, here, what should I do? Maybe I'll file on purpose in the first two minutes of the quarter because <laughs> there's no rule about that time. Yeah, oh, see, gee, man. what else should I do? Gee, I'm a coach of one of these players. Maybe I'll go teach him how to shoot free throws. Let's talk about Tim Duncan and what he did in his career. He started out, it was follow Duncan. And guess what? He learned how to shoot free throws. Why don't they work on that? Why don't we work on improving the game rather than trying to move the game around so it fits players who can't play the game? Izzy, is that a fair strategy, skill development as a solution to Hackashack? 
Um, this wasn't a compromise, Pablo. This was just delaying the inevitable because now instead of, uh, f you know, two minutes of potentially watchable basketball, you have eight minutes of potentially watchable basketball because if somebody goes the hack of whomever, it's, it's difficult to watch. And just, I just want to ask this question. How would the Clippers, Pistons, or whoever these teams that get hacked a lot, uh, how would their seasons have changed if this rule was in play for 48 minutes for the entire game? Probably wouldn't change much, right, except we get to watch better basketball. Ramona. Yeah, I used to be on Woody's side here. I used to be like, you know, just learn to shoot free throws. Carl Malone had to do that. Blake Griffin had to do that. But I had, then I had to sit through the Clippers Rockets playoff series a couple <laughs> of years ago. And mm. I, I, if I had paid money to watch that series, if I wasn't being paid to be there, I would have demanded a refund. It was horrible basketball. And I think if you're a fan and you're demanding this of your league, if you're saying, and they've done research on this, that they that fans do not like this they don't like when teams go to the hack a shack you got to give the people what they want and I think it's something that Adam Silver and the NBA have done well that other sports like baseball have not. Bill. Yeah Woody sports are forever changing the parameters to fit the players this is a rule that needs to be full-time but they can't put it in right away it's a slow easing of the rule into here which is exactly what we need I was sitting next to Ramona for those games and it's awful yeah it's awful when you when you see him it stops everything and it's, it's not entertainment in the NBA as you all been saying all about super teams and all this stuff it's entertainment this is not entertaining it's a good first step is your horn and we talk about sports with weird rules Ramona I'm sure you understand how this show's rules work by now yeah. after you're getting yelled at by Bill yeah, Clashby, Woody that's Page that's and Israel yeah, simultaneously after the break we'll find out how our rookie fares and by herself yeah. the horn, presented by the Brewers of Guinness part of happy hour by yourself Round one of the old British Open is in the books. Phil Mickelson at eight under, leading the way, and this putt kept him from a 62 oh. and breaking the record for best round in a major, which he handled as you might expect. Phil, three clear of the field now, and is this one round or something more, Woody? Oh, it's a lot more, as you know. Uh, Phil's a good friend of mine. We played a lot of golf together. Uh, he won in Muirfield four years ago. Troon is made for him. With his short game and with his putting touch that's on this week, I think that this is his last great chance to win an Open in Scotland, and I think he's going to take advantage of it all week in that weather. Izzy, are you friends hey, with Phil Nickerson? I am not, and I'm curious if Woody has any good financial tips from those rounds of golf he's played with Phil Mickelson, but I digress. Uh, <laughs> I do think it's something. I mean, obviously, he's, it's the last tournament he's won was the Open, and so, um, you know, you've got the big four, if you will, if you throw DJ in there. The closest one is uh, Rory at two under. I think he built up a little cushion there. It could be something, and everybody, I think, wants to see that, right? Ramona. I, I guess I'm going to buy it because Woody told me to do that and everybody's advice to me on doing my first show is just buy whatever Woody says. Terrible, terrible advice. <laughs> no, look, I, I'm buying it because with, when you, Phil Mickelson is 46 years old. I mean, he's not over the hill. This isn't Tom Watson. Well, this is, Phil Mickelson had a great round because the weather was great. He, he, he was out there, and, and, and if it wasn't for the gremlins on that last hole, like I don't know how he missed that last putt, but it's the reason that I stopped golfing after mini golf. Phil. You all know the British Open is not a is a not a sprint; it's a marathon. Eight golfers have shot 63 at the British Open. Only one of them ever won. In 144 years, there has been five wire to wire winners. That's it. Ooh. Just five in 144 years. Sunday's a long way away in the British Open. I've walked the course. Woody's walked the courses before we're there. It's brutal. So no, this is just a one nice a nice thing. This doesn't mean anything right now. Bill Flashkey with the golf stats. We're going to move yeah, on to talk you, you. judiciary <laughs> now. I assume Woody Page has a fantasy Supreme Court team. Oh, sure. I start Judge Judy and what? Okay. Tom Brady's <laughs> appeal to the Second Circuit was denied, and so that four-game suspension is getting realer and realer. Brady's last chance is now the United States Supreme Court. You know, the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh, where should Brady go from here, Ramona? Oh, I, look, I'm buying this. He should go all the way to the Supreme Court. He has said that he's innocent. He has said that this is wrong. So go all the way with it. You don't back down now. And, and look, what he should really, he should go even farther than that. He should file a defamation lawsuit against the NFL. If you're going to make this argument, you don't stop right at the one foot line. 
Bill Blaschke, where are you going with this? No, he's not the one-foot line. He's all the way back. He's beyond midfield. No, every <laughs> legal expert says don't even go near the Supreme Court. They have no chance of hearing this. He needs to go to the bench. He needs to finally just say, you know what? Okay, I, I, I messed up. I cheated four games. I'll take my medicine. I'll move on. He needs to go to the bench. Finally, Tom, give it up. Give it up. Yeah. Woody. Ramona, let me help you out here. Uh, there was a reason why he took a new contract this year that only pays like eight hundred thousand dollars the first four games because he knows he was never going to win give it up now tom take your medicine play after four games get them in the playoffs again stop it stop it is it you know what you've got if you've got a four game suspension you're expecting you've got extra time go fight it tom if you're at this point you might as well keep going just imagine the possibilities of a crying jordan face on ruth bader ginsburg i mean it would just be phenomenal i would love it I don't know if America's ready for that. And for the record, sources at the Supreme Court, which I do have, say pretty shocking if they do take this thing. They're not going to evaluate NFL labor contracts. Yes, sources at the Supreme the Court? Yes, I do. <laughs> More law and football news. Nick Saban most likely will not suspend Alabama players Cam Robinson and Lawrence Jones, who were arrested on drug and weapons charges in Louisiana, and then had those same charges dropped because of insufficient evidence. When challenged by Paul Feinbaum about the non-suspensions yesterday, Saban said that Alabama is handling it internally, that the players weren't charged with anything, and that he's not going to convict them in public. So buy or sell Saban here, Bill. I'm totally selling this. Teams have long ago given up the idea of you have to be charged with something to be suspended for something. All I know is that there was football players in a car with guns. In today's society, in what's going on in the climate today, that's dangerous stuff. A lesson needs to be made. They should have suspended them. Woody, how are you punishing these guys? Well, let's start with the fact that they're playing USC in the opening game of the year. If they were playing <laughs> Appalachian State, this would have been a suspension. So I think even though the courts haven't ruled, that internally, as the coach of the team, you have the right to have conduct issues with your teams and suspend players. I think he's making a mistake here. I'd sell it. Is he? Yeah, I don't really care what the, the, the public thinks. And I, I would say this, this is probably not a time to just be blindly trusting uh, authorities in any field. So, okay, no charges. Uh, the charges were dropped. Well, so it doesn't matter what the district attorney said as far as commentary after that. The, the charges were dropped because they didn't have enough evidence. So, again, why does it matter what Paul Feinbaum or, or any of us thinks as long as Nick Saban believes he is, is, is penalizing the player, punishing the player as necessary without the suspension that we all feel is necessary, I think it's perfectly reasonable. Ramona, they seem to be drawing a line here between legal culpability and internal culpability. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that distinction? Well, listen, my, I'm, I'm selling on Saban here in the sense that at the time where you get to take my word for it is over, and that goes for both college football coaches and for law enforcement. But the job of a reporter, uh, my job, is to go and keep asking questions, and it's not necessarily asking questions of that college football coach. It's asking questions of the authorities. It's actually doing some investigating. And I, d without, I don't think it's, it's Nick Saban's job, but I think it's also the media's job to do it. So I'm with Paul Feinbaum. Keep asking the questions. Oof, a close one today. Plashke and Page in 19 and 20, the low people to what? go, and the self-obsessed oh, millennials have Pokey risen. Pokey woman. They've Ramona, risen. I've never, I've never knocked off early. To both this of you. Totally new for me. And in showdown, Ramona and Israel. Uh-oh. Jeff Teague was traded to the Pacers and now tells Fox 97.5 in Indianapolis that he's moving into the basement of his parents' house, which he bought for them. For the whole year. Ramona, is this financially responsible, lame, or some mix of the two? No, it's financially responsible. He's, he's only under contract for one more year. Why buy another house if you might get traded or signed someplace else? Yeah, I, I, see, I don't know if it's responsible. I think it's a little lame. But think about financial responsibility in terms of food, though. You get to sit down there and just order the, ma, the meatloaf, whenever you want. I mean, it's, it's not a bad deal. <laughs> A point to Izzy for the reference, and we're bringing the lead on NBA player Went Blogger. He's moving into his mom's basement. Come on, that is amazing. To finish That's this awesome. off, Tour de France leader Chris Froome. In this mess in today's 12th stage, as riders ran into a tour motorcycle. Without a working bike, Froome huffed it up the hill until his team could get him a bike. The tour race jury then ruled he lost his bike in unfair circumstances and gets to keep the yellow jersey. Fair ruling, Izzy? 
Yeah, that's a fair ruling. I just don't understand why, what's running a problem? I mean, it's slower than a bicycle anyway. Like, think of the resourcefulness if the guy had, like, a Razor scooter in his jersey and just started using that if he <laughs> fell off of his bike. I think yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's not fair. Like, if you run into the referee, if you run, if the umpire gets in your way, it still counts, right? It, this is just what happens in sports. Too bad, so sad. Ramona, too bad, too sad. Israel Gutierrez, <laughs> take all that. So, there were a lot of poignant moments in the SPs last night, but I don't care. I'm going to start with Lindsey Vaughn here. Uh, sure. Here, you've really got to step your flirt game up, Lindsey. Like, I understand that you're on Oof. TV and everything, but it was a little bit too overt, right? The grabbing of the arm and the joking of the groin, a growing area. Here's the thing. You just got to know your audience. J.J. Watt, if you just like his Instagram post, he might knock on your door and be like, hey, I'm your best friend. So it was a little bit too much, and Hannah Storm, thank you. Thank you for reeling her in right there. It was a great moment, though. Step the it up. Love Step doctor, the love Israel Gutierrez is in. That okay, is going to do it, folks. Thank one, you for coming easy. around. A 23-and-a-half-hour break. See you tomorrow.